The process of responding to a Department of Energy Funding Opportunity Announcement, or FOA, takes a dedicated and focused approach. After all, competition is fierce. Only 208 of the over 1,500 applicants that applied for a Phase 1 SBIR award through the DOE in 2015 were successful in winning an award. It is increasingly important to clearly communicate how your project will help the Department of Energy meet its needs, as well as demonstrate your ability to achieve the technical work plan you propose. A pathway to commercialization is also a necessary element. With this in mind, we sat down with Dr. Mahadevan Krishnan at Alameda Applied Sciences in San Leandro, California to gain additional insights on the DOE proposal writing process. Alameda's process for responding to a DOE FOA actually starts long before the topics are released online. I think one of the most challenging things is to gauge the importance of any topic to the agency. It is a truism that not all of the topics carry equal weight, even though they're there in the published document. But what exactly is pushing the hot buttons this cycle at the agency? The only way to know that is to be part of that environment. So you have to know what the national labs are doing because they're the ones who are singling out the problem areas that might be perfect for an SBIR company to tackle. And you find that out by going to technical meetings where the national lab people are there and, and, and discussing things with them and the agency program managers. So that's information gathering well in advance of the topics coming out. And that's the marketing that's essential. When the DOE does release its topics, which it does twice a year, Krish sits down with his team of scientists and engineers and hones in on those topics to which they will respond. We start the process as soon as the announcement comes out on the web. We look at the topics. We tend to zoom in on keywords that relate to our areas of expertise. Generally, we have an initial meeting where we will toss out a long range of topics and we'll have a general discussion at the broadest level to see whether they play to our strengths, what's innovative, what do we bring to the party, why should we do this, can we see a commercial future, and those kinds of questions at the highest level. Many times, in SBIR and STTR proposals, partners and or subcontractors are needed. In order to engage potential partners, Alameda suggests targeting those with mutual goals. We do work with university and national lab partners, and it's uh, a combination of just knowing people, meeting them at meetings, at technical meetings, finding areas of mutual interest, and then when we write the proposal, contacting them, seeing if they're still interested, and then including them uh, as subcontractors or through a mechanism that's uh, the DOE uh, uses, it's called the CRADA, the Cooperative Research and Development Agreement, CRADA. So we will negotiate a CRADA with the National Lab on the basis of which their effort is well defined, as is ours, and then we jointly work out a proposal. Krishnan, who regularly speaks all over the country in support of the SBIR program, has developed best practices for engaging with new partners. When marketing for a new proposal, I find that I go by the three Fs, find, focus, and follow up. It's easy very often to find an opportunity. You go to a meeting and someone is talking about this problem that they have, and you say, hey, I think we can solve that. It's a little harder to focus because now you've got to do the real marketing of getting a meeting with the agency head or the national lab person or whoever it is and focus their attention on your skills and your abilities. But the third F is the one that I've found in my experience is where most people fall off the wagon and that's follow up. You're so euphoric about having gone to the meeting and made these connections you come back saying, we've got a real winner here, we can do this, and you forget to follow up. When it comes time to write the actual proposal, Alameda always starts from scratch, ensuring a unique and targeted proposal that addresses the specific needs of the Department of Energy at that time. In our case, we've never used anybody outside of the company to provide expertise in writing or marketing or any of the above. In terms of boilerplate, other than the sections at the very end that describe the facilities, 
there is no boilerplate. Because when you talk about related research, it's unique to each proposal. Because you want to write the related research so that it is relevant to what you're proposing to do. And the rest of the proposal is different each time. In writing the core of the proposal, the work plan, Alameda suggests focusing on the key issues that DOE wants to know. How innovative is the work that's being proposed? Is this team capable of doing it? What impact will it have? Is it not just innovative, but is it impactful? Is their plan coherent? Is it realistic? Can they accomplish the goals that they've set out? Are the resources that they're bidding, the labor hours and other resources adequate to meeting the objectives? What are the commercial prospects for this, were it to be successful? And you definitely have to address all of those things. And in terms of the work plan itself, which is very often the core of a proposal, uh, the mistake that people make, and we've made that, and we've learned from it, is to assume too much on the part of the reviewer. One has to really begin by assuming that the reviewer doesn't know you, doesn't know what your capabilities are, so don't assume anything. Tell the reviewer where the work will be done, what resources will be used, how you'll make measurements, and most importantly, ask yourself whether the things that you're proposing to do will improve your chances of meeting the objectives and winning a phase two. Winning a phase two grant is something that Krish sets his sights on from the beginning. Well, the objective, of course, of any phase one should be to win a phase two, because the phase two provides, uh, through DOE's investment, what I would call real money, the, the kind of level of investment that allows you to accomplish something, to accomplish your goals, and most importantly, to leverage the DOE investment into private investment. It's very difficult to do that with a phase one alone. So the phase one's objective is to win the phase two. Dealing with rejection is always an issue when it comes to playing in the SBIR and STTR arena. But if you take a step back and understand where you can improve, it will help you the next time around. One of the things you learn is that when you are too enamored of a technology and you write the proposal and it comes across as what they call technology push, as opposed to market pull, then you're fighting a, an uphill battle. You have to ask, where's the market pulling? And the market, in the case of the DOE, may not be necessarily the commercial market. It may be a national lab with a pressing need, and it's asking for a solution. Whether you're going to a VC or whether you're going to the Department of Energy, it's no different. And the market in that case might be a different market. It might be the national lab seeking a solution to a pressing problem. That's market pulling. And you say, I have the salve that I can apply to your wound here. Then you're in. But if you say, I have this great widget and everybody needs it, you're going to lose every time. Above all, Krish advises to never lose sight of the solution that you're providing to a pressing national need. His perspective is one that small businesses can emulate. Well, here we are, we're part of a bigger effort, we can be relevant. As opposed to, oh, we have a commercial plan and we see a topic here and it's related to what we'd like to do commercially. Well, that's fine. But if you don't also address a need for the agency, for DOE in this case, and for its key players, the national labs, you're not even on first base. With the best practices and insight provided from Alameda Applied Sciences, Small businesses that wish to begin providing solutions to the Department of Energy can successfully do so through the SBIR and STTR programs.